Hey, deserving listeners, Darcy and Stacy, let's watch. He's trying to protect my heart and my feelings. But sometimes I just need him to just listen and let me talk. I just want you to know and understand that I feel bad that I can't give you a child. And you have to live knowing that. Yeah, this is a real common conflict that I will see on my couch in my office with couples that will have chronic conflict. Uh, not always, but sometimes where uh, people, and, and this is attributed to men often, but I found it to be universal, that people have a hard time listening, especially when it's a situation like this. And instead of listening, they will try to fix the problem. So right now, Stacy is sad and upset and worried for Florian that she can't have kids. And she's also kind of worried about the surgery for her cyst. And she just wants him to understand. Um, at the very least, just start off with that and you know maybe go into fix-it mode after that. But Florian, and we've seen scenes like this before, is not the best listener. And I didn't show the scene or the bit, but... Uh, he, she's like, yeah, this, you know, this sucks, and I can't have kids. This is horrible. You know, it's, it's a big deal to to me and to you. And and he's like, just chill, just relax. And she's like, yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. So it sounds like this is some kind of pattern between the two of them. So sometimes people will ask me, why do people do this? Why do people, instead of just listening, which is the easiest thing to do, by the way, it is the it requires the least amount of effort. You don't have to think about a solution. You don't have to say the right thing. You just listen. You're like, wow, I'm with you on that. You know, just like, yeah, it does. You just agree. You're just like, yeah, I, I hear you. It does suck. It, it is scary. It is disappointing. Um, I feel disappointed too. I'm disappointed for you. I, I wanted to have a kid and, and now we can't have kids together. That, you know, that's sad. And instead, and I didn't show that clip as well, for Florian, he's for the first time he's in the interview being a little bit more vulnerable and he's saying look I'm scared and I want her to relax so I wonder if he has some kind of traumas around uh, someone in his life maybe when he was a kid having a lot of stress because he's really focused on chill relax you're stressed out now maybe one could argue that Stacy gets worked up a lot and too often and needs someone to help her with that I don't know if I would agree with that in terms of what we've seen. And it doesn't help people when you are stressed to just tell someone, relax. You know, that doesn't help. It just causes them to feel shamed and suppress and to feel hurt. If someone is uh, freaking out and you think they're over freaking out, telling them they're freaking out and, you know, verbally slapping them across the face and saying, stop it, isn't going to help. So, um, just being with someone and, and just, yeah, I'm with you. Or just do nothing. Like, at the very least, do nothing. But trying to fix and telling someone to relax is it's such a way of shutting people down. So I think that Florian has some kind of issues. We've never heard, or at least to my memory, anything about his childhood or his past. But I wouldn't be surprised if he has some kind of traumas around that. But anyway, why do people do that? Well, it's because we take shortcuts. So someone is, that we love is coming to us with a problem. And we, so our, our very first reaction is noticing that they're suffering. And we care about them and we don't want them to suffer, okay? And we take this shortcut and we try to take away their suffering and also our suffering because we're suffering because they're suffering by suggesting a very simplistic solution. Just relax or don't think about it or everything will be fine. Or maybe you should just get a divorce. You know, if some if a friend comes to you and says, I'm having some trouble with my spouse and people will do this all the time. Like, we'll just get a divorce or I'm having trouble with my boss. Well, maybe you should just quit. It, people do this all the time. And it is an anxiety reaction. If, if you come to me with your problem with your job and I tell you and I'm and, I, and you're stressed out and now I'm stressed out for you, and I tell you to quit your job and you do quit your job, then I believe problem solved. You no longer are suffering from that bad job, but now you don't have a job. <laughs> and maybe there were other parts of the job that the person does like that they now have to give up, but at least I don't have to deal with the fact that you're complaining. So I think that's often why people do it and they weren't modeled maybe good. A lot of people, 
I would say 95% of people on the planet have not been modeled good listening behavior. It's such a rare thing to see someone who actually just listens to people. It's such a rare event that you might not have ever seen or heard it. And so when I'm talking with my clients, I will model that. I might even engineer that between them. And it's an, it's an adjustment. You know, people have a real hard time. It's such a foreign vibe, a foreign reaction to other people. Just listen, just hear them, just be with them, just sit there, just nod your head, just say, I got you, I hear you, I'm with you. I understand how you would feel that way. I might feel the same way if I was in your shoes. That's all you gotta say. And that's often all the people are looking for. And obviously Stacy is looking for that. I love you for you. What God bring, bring, no bring, no bring. Yeah, I know you, I've never questioned your love. That's, I don't know why you keep saying that because I've never questioned your love. For and then what happens is Stacy starts to complain. She's like, oh, here we go. You're not really listening to me. I just want you to listen. You always do this just relax thing. And then he now is hurt and triggered and starts to argue with her essentially saying, uh, you need to trust in God. Like you need to relax. That's my point with you. And now we're in a conflict where not only are you a bad listener, but you're also creating problems and creating hurt. What's the matter? You're not going to be able to experience having stay, a child stay. of your own. And are you going to be okay with that? I'm be okay. Later on down the road. What? what? Ten years, what? fifteen years, twenty years. You're going to be okay with that. So. The tone of this conversation is just so uh, frustrating to watch. Uh, they're, I think, on the same page. And I think she's, I think, a little overly worried that he is going to divorce her and leave her if she can't have a child. I, I don't, from his statements, I, I think he's okay with not having children, or at least on the surface. But she has a legitimate worry, and I'm glad she's bringing that up. And all you'd have to, do, all he would have to do is hear her and go like, "Hey, I hear you, that you're worried that if you can't have kids, that I'm going to leave you. But I'm here to tell you, I, I I love you because of this, this, and this. And and although it's a bummer to me as well, I uh, I'm okay with it, and I'm with you. But instead, he takes this really weird way of this assumption. He he, he approaches this very vulnerable and normal question or uh, you know kind of uh, line of questioning from Stacy and he approaches it with such exasperation Stace like just not gonna like what's wrong with you like and, and I just have to figure that he is he's tr transferring something he's displacing something from his past he is seeing something that does not exist in the moment based on what did happen in the past first of all do we surgery and come here and like talk probably relax but I do but but Stop telling me to relax. Huh? I'm not. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just talking to you. Oh Jesus! Relax. Just relax. And I can't. I just heard the worst news ever. Right. So it's this. It's just. It's. I feel bad for them because I don't think either one of them are coming from a weird place. But they're particularly Florian. I think is coming from such a distorted uh, standpoint. And I. I just have to wonder if he even knows what listening even looks like. You know, if, if I just showed him, like, just do this, just, and I've done this before for people in my office, just let's start over. Florian, just say, I hear you and try to feel it. You know, don't put, put the fixing aside and just focus on what she is telling you. And, you know, we can worry because the Florians of the word, world will often tell, tell me they're like, but we got to do, we got to, we have to do, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, okay. And even though I'm thinking, no, we don't, but I'll think, okay, we can do that, but let's put it on pause for 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. Let's just relax and listen and just be with her and just understand, show her you understand. Sometimes I'll even say, okay, Stacy just revealed some things and I'll see them struggle and I'll go Florian. Before we can move forward, I need you to convince Stacy that you heard her. You know, can, is this the way I word it? And I, I learned this through experience that this phrasing it gets to the point. Convince Stacy that you understand what she's going through, and we'll do vice versa. 
And then the Florians of the world will say, often they'll say something that doesn't get to the point. You know, they'll say like, well, she's like freaking out because she thinks that I want a, a kid and, and she should be relaxing, you know, and they'll get back into that mode again. And I'll be like, okay, good attempt. Stacy, did he summarize what you'd said? And Stacy would be like, no, <laughs> he did it. All right, Stacy, tell Florian how you feel, you know, in a little chunk. And so Stacy would, uh, Florian, convince Stacy that you heard and understand what she said. And we micro focus on this little interaction and really iron out all the wrinkles and really show step by step how to do it. Because just telling someone to listen can actually be really hard for them to do because there's so many emotional, weird, cognitive places that they go that interfere with just hearing someone, putting aside your own agenda, really listening and just say, I hear you or I see you saying this. And it can feel so corny to people as well. And that's why we have that uh, shirt and that mug that says, if being healthy is being corny, then be corny. So, uh, cause I would say that cause I would do this and the Florians of the world would turn to me and be like, this is so corny. And I'd be like, well, if being corny is healthy, then be corny. <laughs> so if it's health, if it's, if it's corny to be healthy, then be corny. So, um, but once you practice it enough, you can do it without being corny is the thing because, but in the beginning it'll be corny. It'll feel corny because it's so not, you're not used to it. And right now, I need him to just let me speak, let me get it out, and not just put it on me to relax. This shouldn't be us arguing right now. Why do you keep bringing the same situation? I can't help my feelings that it would have been nice to be able to give you a child of our- Right, it's so, it's so frustrating. She's just like, is it all right if I'm disappointed that we can't have kids? Is that okay with you? I, why are you yelling at me? Why are you so exasperated? Why do you keep telling me to relax? I don't want to relax. This is, and plus I'm not freaking out until you started telling me to relax. I was just saying I was sad that I can't have kids. Is that okay with you, Florian? Please never happen, never happen. What are you gonna do? This is bull Yeah, I just have to think that Florian has seen some very destructive, toxic communication in his life, probably between his parents. I mean, the escalate and he's been doing this from the beginning and the escalation to this is bs like i'm just gonna i'm gonna get super angry the fact that you can't differentiate in this moment be like well wait what's happening right now okay i just she's going through something i guess i just need i mean there's no guidance there for him it just escalates and i wonder about stacy and florian that she does a lot to accommodate this problem and other problems that he has so that they don't have these kinds of blowups. But this scenario is, is so important to Stacy that she can't help but to bring it up and it can't help but to illuminate this problem they have. And Stacy is looking for confirmation that he's okay if they never have kids. And he keeps just telling her to relax and God will show the way or something. And she's just like, it's not gonna cut it this time. So I wonder if Stacy in this moment is like, because I think, I don't know, but from what we've seen, I can imagine Stacy being the sort of person who would go into denial about the problems that are in a relationship and how she might just look the other way a lot or accommodate a lot. And moments like this, I wonder if she's like, what am I doing? Talking to you. Why do you keep bringing the same situation? I can't help my feelings that it would have been nice to be able to give you a child of our own. Please never happen, never happen. Or what are you gonna do? <laughs> Jesus, no, happen, happen, no happen, no happen. Relax. We oh. <laughs> if I was Stacy, I would be like, this is not gonna work. <laughs> I mean, you, you come to someone with a, that's so obvious uh, of a normal sadness or something. Yeah, we just got news that I can't have kids. And he and he progresses to this point where relax, just you can't do yelling at you. Like it's one thing to not be a good listener. It's another thing to somehow turn this into a moment where I'm stupid and you're yelling at me. Like how, how did that happen?
He just got off the phone with the doctor and well, who cares what say he basically told us it's not possible to have a child. So I don't get what say the doctor. So I, I forgot that element. And maybe that's a factor I should be thinking about is that he doesn't believe doctors. He has he said these statements of like one doctor will say this and the other doctor will say that. And maybe his life has taught him that. Uh, so maybe he's like, look, we could still have kids. Stop listening to doctors, which I just have to say, like, I've heard a lot of that lately. And it's um, not pleasant to live in a world where people just disregard um, experts. <laughs> like, you can be skeptical, but to just completely, you know, not listen at all. It's just like, no, they're all idiots. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, they're doing the best they can. They can make mistakes. Uh, but anyway, so he is saying, I don't believe them. Okay, if, if that's your point of view, then I guess it's, uh, I don't know. It's your point of view. And so, but you know that Stacy doesn't have that point of view. So, uh, and she's going through something. So just listen. I want to be more honest. So are you okay with that? Okay, bro. I like to say face to face. I don't get what's the doctor. This book frustrated me. I'm so glad, like Stacy, tell me, oh, you know, I have kids and this kind of things. Bull no, I'm here with her. I'm happy with her. I understand. Okay, great. Just say that. Why be exasperated? Don't tell her to relax. If you want her to relax, just say that in a nice way, in a loving way. Just, it'd be so easy. Just say, no, honey, I love you. I don't want to be with anyone else. And I, I don't care if we can't have kids. I want to be with you. How long I take? 15, seven seconds? That's all you got to say. What defenses or distortions are getting in the way of him being able to say that? I can only speculate. No matter what the person is. This is what I said before. Steve. I feel like one day you're going to wake up and be like, oh, you can't give Stace. me a kid. Stace. No, 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 you're wrong. Before I come, Stace, before I come here, I know you age. I know you everything. I tell you before I come here, I love you for you. Okay, good. <laughs> He's still in that exasperated tone, but we're getting there, which is which is good. I, I, I'm glad for the two of them for that. And another factor that might be happening for Florian is that he has experienced Stacy's insecurities a lot and is frustrated that he has to frequently reassure her and also is hurt that she frequently essentially uh, uh, intimates that he doesn't love her for her and only loves her for money or for kids or whatever. And that hurts his feelings. Okay, uh, I get that. But I, I just, there's other ways of approaching it. Nope, that's not what we're talking about. It's not what we're talking about here. Maybe you really want a child and, and you're just telling me this because that's what I want to hear. Interesting. So I don't know if Florian is being truthful. He seems like he's being truthful. He's given up a lot to be with her, moved halfway across the world. So, uh, and as he said, I, I knew your age. <laughs> I'm not a dummy. I understand these things. And... And I wonder if Florian actually doesn't even want kids uh, or was very ambivalent. Anyway, but we're running into that thing that we see in Darcy a lot, which is in, in spite of any evidence to the contrary, she's convinced that someone's going to leave her and abandon her. They don't really love her. And so Stacy is in this moment, even though Florian is, I think, has turned a corner and is being good in that reassuring way. She's like, no, no, no. I'm convinced that you don't love me and that you're not going to be with me. If this happens a lot, I can see why Florian would get frustrated because he's like, not this again. <laughs> We've been over this already. Now, I've worked with people like this and I've worked with people with Stacy's traumas relationally. And a lot of people have the kind of uh, abandonment traumas and schemas that she has and there's a way to talk about it and they're not in a terrible zone and Stacy's not in a terrible zone there's an easier way to talk about it that is less triggering such that you, you know you say something like and this is a little tip for y'all you say you, you, you think about it and you own your feelings and you say okay what's really happening right here and you say okay 
in this moment, I feel maybe like you don't love me, but I know that you do because you've reassured me a lot. But because of my past, it makes me wonder, it makes me paranoid and terrified that you don't really love me. But I'm not telling you that you've done anything wrong. I'm just telling you that this is how I'm feeling in the moment. And I, it probably has nothing to do with what you're doing. So if you could really help me out and reassure me again that you love me, then that would be great. Or just understand that I'm scared, then that would be great. You know, you, you own it and you lay it out and you direct the person. And we work in therapy with the other person so that they can interpret it right, calm down, don't take it personally, and say the right thing. So let's see what Florian says here. The reality is, you know. The reality, the reality is you want so bad like to know everything, to be honest with you. You want everything in life, I understand. But you need to be happy with what you have. I am happy. Wow. I'm so happy with the way my life is. I, I feel blessed. I have two oh. amazing sons. Oh. You know how much I love my sons. It's so weird that they're fighting. <laughs> uh, what are they fighting about? You know, it's this stance that they take, uh, especially Florian, of opposition. There's nothing, there's nothing, they're not fighting about like, should we get pizza or tacos? You know, should we get married or not married? They're, there's not an opposition here. <laughs> she learned that she can't have kids and she's bummed out about it. And she wonders if he will leave her if she can't have kids. And he has stated that he won't leave her and that he loves her. And he also holds out for a miracle that could happen. And there's no opposition there. They're, I think, basically on the same page, but it's just, it's the attitude, particularly from Florian, of just like, here we go again, you and your stupid feelings. But we're married, and you're not going to be able to experience stay, stay, stay. the joy of parenthood the way I do. Okay, okay. That's, okay. It. That's it. Listen to me. It's, it's is what it is. Stay, stay. My experience is I'm happy with you. It, it, <laughs> it's not, like the uh, he's snapping his fingers and it's like telling her to shut up, and it's and then he says something that he could just wait, <laughs> like. You don't have to get someone to shut up and say something. Just just wait. Just listen. Okay. I'll wait. Hey. And then when she finishes, you say, no, I love you. But it's th this. Oh, whoa. Uh, stop talking. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. I, I. Okay. Thank you. What? 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 Sometimes, you know, speed so much. Drive slow. Go slow. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there's a language barrier issue here, but uh, I also think that she's bumping up against something that she usually accommodates or sweeps under the rug, and this is quite quite a thing. The And we've seen other scenes in other episodes building up to this of just how bad of a listener he is, and it, it is very consistent with the way that he approaches things. Yeah, His message is essentially, shut up, relax, and... Um, I don't know what, like, shut up, relax. I don't want to hear it. And you're ridiculous. What? I feel like he's still not getting my feelings. I'm not going to be silenced. Stop talking, bro. Stop talking. Can you speak like simple, simple? I just heard the word. Yeah. So last season we saw this and we haven't seen it this season. I don't know why, maybe they didn't include it or they found some sort of equilibrium where this sort of thing wasn't triggered, I don't know. But he, he, when he turns a corner, he gets real abusive and he's definitely in that mode right now. I really need him to tell me it's gonna be okay. Are you listening? Relax, hey, take it easy. I need him to know how I feel inside. Relax, is that all you can say? Oh, Jesus. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, cut your losses. Uh, that's all you have to say? Just relax? Shut up? This is BS? Uh, yeah, that's, that's it? <laughs> Thank you so much, and goodbye. All right, well, that is it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.